Oh, they're so pretty. Look at this. Perfect. Potassium permanganate has been one of those chemicals that I've been wanting to get for quite a long time. But I never really got around to it because I could never find it locally. And I don't really like ordering chemicals online if I can help it because... You know, like, you're usually going to pay a pretty exorbitant price for uh, small amounts of chemicals, at least lab-grade chemicals. But about two or three weeks ago, I went to my local hardware store and noticed that they finally started carrying this. Uh, apparently, this is you know, a potassium permanganate iron filter regenerant. I've heard of people talking about this, but I've always been kind of jealous because, like I said, I've never actually seen one at my local hardware stores. So whenever I saw this, I was like, oh yeah, I'm buying that. It's like 4.75 pounds. I think this was, it wasn't super cheap. It was like 30 bucks, but it's for almost five pounds of uh, potassium permanganate. That's, that's pretty cheap. Uh, even though it you know has potassium permanganate right there on the front, it doesn't say if that's all that's in here or if maybe there's something else that's in here to aid in the, you know, iron filter regeneration or whatever. I could look up the material safety data sheet and maybe uh, try to get some information that way. But I think the best thing to do would just to carry out a uh, recrystallization procedure. That way I know that what I'll be working with is relatively pure. I'm not going to do all of this. I'll probably just do a little bit, to have, maybe like 100 grams or so to, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see how much I do. But it's not going to be nearly, not even half of this. Uh, I did do a small test batch in this little beaker here to see if it would even crystallize out. And I'll tell you what, I've never really seen potassium permanganate crystals, not even online. I guess it would help if I actually put it on camera. But I'll tell you what, it actually forms these really, really pretty, really neat looking needle-like crystal structures. And I did add some of this to a little test tube full of water. And it turns purple like you'd expect, so it leads me to believe that these are reasonably pure potassium permanganate crystals. So let me show you how I'm going to go about doing this on a larger scale. Okay, I looked up some charts on Google, and I found this little quick reference guide to, show you, to tell you approximately how much potassium permanganate you can dissolve in a known amount of distilled water at certain temperatures. So this is going to be in grams per liter as far as the potassium permanganate amount. And as you can see at zero degrees Celsius, it's very low solubility, 27.8 grams per liter. But even if you just heat it up the, the water up to 75 degrees Celsius, it's over 10 times, the potassium permanganate is over 10 times more soluble in the water at this higher temperature. Now, that's not even the boiling point of water. 323 and a half grams per liter as compared to 27.8 grams per liter. So I'm going to do a half batch. So take 323.5, divide that by two, we get 161.75 grams. That's how many grams I'm going to weigh out and heat up some water in a beaker up to 75 degrees Celsius. I was just going to boil this, but potassium permanganate apparently starts decomposing at about 110 degrees Celsius. So I think I'll just stick with the, the maximum temperature this guide has given me, which is 75 degrees. I'll just kind of shoot for that. If it goes a couple degrees over, it's not going to be the end of the world. And yeah, just go from there. So let's get to it. First thing we got to do is tear out this scale with this beaker on it. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to measure out the 100, 161.7, yeah, 0.75 grams. So I'll just pour this in. Potassium permanganate is actually a pretty dense powder, so it it doesn't take as much as you think. At least I don't think so. I gotta pull my shirt up over my nose because that stuff's actually kind of kind of irritating to breathe in. And now I gotta get rid of some of this because I overshot, which is fine. I'll just do this. There, now I can, now that I'm not dying from the freaking powder coming off of this, the little particulates. There we go. Good enough. Okay, good. 
Okay, I'm turning on my uh, my filter because that's actually really. I didn't realize that the the oh, the fumes that come off of this. Well, it's not even the fumes. It's probably just like the really really small particles of this potassium permanganate are actually really choking. It almost it's like bleach. It actually kind of reminds me of ozone. <clears throat> so now the next thing to do is to get a beaker since we're gonna do half batch I need 500 milliliters of distilled water I'm going to get a five well a 600 milliliter beaker uh, do that I'm gonna put that on here and I'm just gonna crank the heat all the way up and get my distilled water And I'm going to fill this beaker up to the 500 milliliter line. And good enough. That's fine. It doesn't have to be completely precise. <clears throat> all right. So now, all I need to do is monitor this water until it gets to 75 degrees Celsius. Once that does, once it does, I'll add in the potassium permanganate it should dissolve fairly easily at that temperature and then after that all I gotta do is throw that in the freezer and in theory it should crystallize out give me pure potassium permanganate crystals leaving any impurities behind in the water that we can just discard the water so let me set up my temperature probe here and just kinda wait for this to heat up I guess alrighty I got my temperature probe installed in this little clamp here. Beaker of water is on the hot plate. I got a magnetic stir, stirring's turned on, and the probe is hooked up to my little thermometer reader here. So now all I gotta do is just wait for this to get up to about 75 degrees Celsius. One reason that I wanna purify this is because you can see that there's a very deep purple color to these granules but there's also like these little I don't know white bits mixed in with it I don't know if that's the actual potassium permanganate or if that's an impurity if that's something that they purposely added in there I, I really don't know so that's why we're doing this recrystallization step and I actually uh, had to turn this guy on right here this is just a, a soldering fan that I took a HEPA filter and tape it too so that it can kind of draw any little particulates away that are kind of irritating. It doesn't really work that great for like noxious fumes like acid fumes or chlorine or something but this fan's actually really good for taking away like really fine airborne particulates that may uh, cause some irritation. I know I said I was going to wait till the water got to 75 degrees Celsius before I put the potassium permanganate in but you know what, I'll just add it now and then I'll just let it kind of coast up to 75. It's going to take a, a second to recover anyway, so the temperature should drop a little bit. So, let's do this. And you can see, you get this really, really pretty purple color. Potassium permanganate does make a really, really neat looking solution. And I'm just going to put all of it in that I weighed out. Good. And let's see what the temperature is. Yeah, that dropped the temperature down to, you know, 61. It's going to take a bit to recover, so I will just uh, keep an eye on this. And once it reaches 75, I'll turn it off and throw it in the freezer. There we go. Up to 75 degrees. So we'll turn this off, turn the stirring off. I wrapped a little aluminum foil around the top here to keep everything in. Take my temperature probe out. Put it in here. Now, just go put this in the freezer. Let it cool down for a while. And we'll come back whenever everything's crystallized out. It's not quite down to zero degrees yet because I forgot that my uh, lab freezer is quite small. So I just put this in my fridge part of my lab refrigerator slash freezer thing. And uh, it's down to about, uh, what do we got? 20, 
about 30 degrees. We'll go with that. That should give us some crystals to look at. I'm actually going to decant the liquid layer from this from this guy and put it into these because these will fit in my freezer. So I'll just pop these in the freezer and let them crystallize out overnight. But we did get a, what did I say that was? 30 degrees? We did get a 40 degree uh, decrease in temperature from our original solution. So we should still have some crystals in, at the bottom of this beaker here. So let's see what we got. Pour that off into there. Pour that off into there. And, you ready? Oh, yes. Look at those. Let me get a, let me get a little spatula here. Oh, oh, they're so pretty. Look at this. Perfect. So, yeah, I'm just going to let these sit out overnight in here let them dry out completely and then i'll have some relatively pure potassium permanganate crystals that i can put in a different bottle and use them for higher purity purposes all right i had these in the freezer overnight you can see my lab freezer is very small so that's why I had to put it in these smaller beakers. Now well, let's see what kind of crystals we have in the bottom of this. Now since this has been in the freezer for almost 24 hours, it's been almost a full day. So let's decant off. I'm just gonna decant that in the liquid off of these smaller beakers into this larger one. And I'll just let this uh, evaporate over the course of however long it needs. I just kind of want to see how much will actually remain after the water all evaporates off. I'm purposely trying to wait to reveal to the camera how many crystals we have in the bottom after we already got that first crop of crystals. After letting the solution cool down to, what was it, like 30 degrees Celsius, I think it was. All right, here we go. The big reveal for you and me. I've never, I haven't seen this yet. Oh, yes. Oh, that's phenomenal. Look at that. That is really pretty. Okay, and I'm assuming the second one is going to have similar results in the bottom. Wow, these beakers, surprisingly, coming from a freezer, are really, really cold. Who would have thought? Try to get as much of the water off as possible. Oh, yes. Very nice. Oh, they're so pretty. Potassium permanganate is such a really pretty compound, man. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Whoa, ring my bell, damn. That's pretty good. So, we got those guys there, those guys there, on top of the crystals we already recovered yesterday. Should I add these in directly with these ones or keep them separate? Ah, eh, screw it. I'll just add them all together. Best thing to do right now would be to kind of stir this up a little bit and see how that kind of frees up some water that's trapped in the crystal. And very slowly decant that off into the larger beaker. If we lose a few crystals that are floating on the surface of the water, it's not a, it's not a huge deal. That's pretty good. And these ones and this one seem to be kind of a larger crystals, at least at first glance. Maybe they are about the same. But you can see it's pretty important to stir your crystal solution, well, your uh, crop of crystals like this whenever you're trying to purify via recrystallization just because they do trap a lot of water in between them. And the water that we're pouring off here hopefully contains any, well, at least a good majority of uh, the impurities that would be present in the solution, well, in the crystals that we started with. And what we're left with in the bottom of the beakers. And in this plastic cup here is reasonably pure potassium permanganate, which should be more than use usable for most amateur lab purposes. So yeah, uh, all I'm gonna do now is take these, 
beakers full of crystals, empty them into here. I'll stir everything together. And then I'm just going to let them sit in this little plastic cup that I like. I really like these little plastic cups. I get them at Walmart. They're like two bucks for like 25 of them. And they're just so useful, useful for like easy and quick reactions that can, you know, be done in a plastic container. But yeah, I'll just uh, put them all in here. And this is my cluttered workbench with like 6,000 other things that I have going simultaneously because my ADD doesn't allow me to focus on one thing <laughs> at once. My, my mind's always jumping around trying to do like different things all, all the time. But I like to put these when I'm trying to dry. This is the magnesium dioxide that I showed in my rant video or well, that I was filtering in my rant video. And I turn on this little HEPA filter. I like to use this HEPA filter for my biology, you know, like my petri dishes, but I also use it for just a nice, clean, steady flow of air to dry off any chemicals. It makes the evaporation process so much quicker. Uh, and then after that, I guess at some point I will be making a video on titrating hydrogen peroxide to see its concentration. So I thank you very much for watching. I will catch you next video. Enjoy, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.